Welcome back to another Lure Lab episode here on the Serious Angler Network. I am your host, Andrew Fole, and we really hope you enjoyed the last episode that came out last Saturday with Cole Sands talking about lipless crankbaits. It was a really good one. He dropped in a lot of juice about where to fish a lipless crankbait and his favorite one during the winter time. With that being said, though, we have another special guest today. We have Sam Rardin in from Minnesota, who is a state licensed guide over there and guides on a lot of lakes, including the ever famous Mille Lacs Lake. This episode is going to be really cool because we're diving into basically a different styled Alabama rig called the Minnesota rig. So it's special to the region up there. And we're going to find out why from Sam and how he fishes it and how good this thing is. So without further ado, let's get Sam on here. What's up, man? How's it going? You staying yeah. warm over there? You know, it's actually been pretty warm over the past few days. We've been having like 30, 40 degree weather, but it's going to dip like real soon. Oh, so. great. Get that cold out of here. I'm sure you're dying to have the boat out right now. Oh my gosh. You know, there's like, a couple lakes over here that will stay open for a little bit longer i know i'll get out maybe <laughs> i'm really lucky nice so how's the fishing been decent you know the last probably the last like two weeks i would say i put the boat away so prior to that the fishing was really good dude like i would say this was probably my best fall it was great through october into like the second or third week of november that's really awesome cool. Yeah, I saw the giant smallmouth you've been catching, and I'm quite envious because uh, I I think my last bass trip out was probably the second week of no first week in November I want to say right after Halloween, and um, then we had a lot of big rain, wind, snow. I rushed my boat, got it into storage. I haven't even winterized it yet. I have to go winterize it, like just a bunch of crap. But <laughs> yeah, I'm jealous. I think you're you're still catching them before. Before I well after I put my boat away so like I'm jealous that doesn't happen very often <laughs> sure yeah so but anyways the Minnesota rig let's dive right into it right so what is the Minnesota rig for all of our viewers and listeners so the Minnesota rig is basically it's an Alabama rig with only one hook and I got one right here this is a hog farmer rig <clears throat> and what it is like so I got blades on this gold blades and um how i pick the blade color it really to me i think like color water matters the most but basically i fish this on almost exclusively on Lax. i've done a little bit of largemouth fishing with it but uh basically only fishing on Lax and been successful with it um i use the one swim bait on the end and i think they make another one where there's less blades and less blades and basically all heads and what you can do what a lot of guys do is they'll just take and cut off the hooks on them and then just have them as dummies mm -hmm. and then one bait as the the actual target bait you know so do you prefer the one with all the blades or the one with dummies i do i feel that the one with the blades just has a little bit more drying power and i'll talk a little bit about that i mean for me the a rig or the alabama rig minnesota rig I use it a lot more to get the fish off off the bottom, and I know like I get fit or I try to get fish to show themselves using live scope with it. Mm -hmm. I don't. Think I used it properly last year, as opposed to this year. I can actually see the fall rate with it, like in real time. Um, and the way that I like to fish it, dude, is pretty much just slow roll it like a spinner bait, yeah. and rather that's seeing the fish off bottom, you can kind of see their mood and see how active they are and. I guess where this really shines is when, like, say that the fish are so far on bottom, you can't see them on your live scope. This is a great way to get them to show themselves, pull them up off bottom. That's awesome. So, like, what kind of swim baits and heads are you using to rig the swim baits on that Minnesota rig? Sure. So, I'm using an Outcast Tackle Golden Eye. Wow. Um, this great is jig head, by the way. Great jig head. Dude, this has a look on it. And the way that it bounces off rocks, it's pretty much like exclusive for me i don't really throw any other swim bait heads uh i'm using on this one i'm using a three eights and the reason why is because i was fishing it a little bit deeper um three eights i i think that i throw that in like 18 to 22 24 feet mm -hmm. 
then I get a little bit, I get a little bit lighter and to like a quarter or three sixteenth ounce to fish it like 12 feet or shallower. And I know that, I think that everybody does it a little bit differently, but for me, I'm slow winding this thing almost in every situation. I've never really found that burning it per se gets more bites. I think mm -hmm. it's more on the turn. And what I mean by that is like when the bait starts to travel upward, I see that being like, that's like the time when they're going to react to the bait for me anyway. And that's, that's the, very interesting. Like, I'm specifically talking Mille Lacs. Like, can't tell you how many fish I've seen come from 22 feet and they'll literally hit it like five feet from my boat. And I watch it. <laughs> do you think it's because they're trying to pin it against the boat to eat it? I kind of do. Like, you see, like, we see what they do to bait in shallow water. I mean, they push it to the surface. And that's when we start throwing top waters and stuff like that. So I really think it's just it's out of instinct for them just to drive that boat up. And are you using live scope, Andy? Oh yeah. Okay. So like how far out are you zooming out with it? So typically when I am in shallower, I'll go down to like 60, 70 foot. But if I'm out in 25 to 45, I'll be out to about 120. Sure, sure. So one thing that I found with this thing is that I can see it's really, really far away. Yeah. Like super far away, which is another thing. Like it's another trick that I got where if I found that if I can get fish to follow this thing up to my boat from like 50, 60 feet away, I just got to double or triple the cast length on it. And sometimes that works and I can get them to like actually strike it. Uh, that's a fantastic tip. Yeah. And I agree. Like, I can't tell you how many times throwing like a standard A rig that I, when I throw it like 200, 220 feet, that they eat it instantly, like that first crank of the handle over mm -hmm. here. It's kind of wild. Like, sure. but, or they'll eat it right at the boat. It's like one or the other. It's never, it's almost never in between. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. And with that, like, I guess I'll tell you like the rod that i use i use a seven foot four heavy and it's a moderate rod it's got a really it's it's got a softer tip on it and then i actually use for my reel i use a Daiwa tatula type r it's like a bigger frame it's oh, not yeah. the those type frame. r's are awesome it's yeah. sad they stopped making them dude it's bulletproof like yep. i can't tell you what this thing is seeing this poor thing has had so much abuse done to it, but uh I kind of go against the grain and I use 40 pound braid to 20 pound mono and I tie an FG knot and the mono leader is probably like four and a half, five feet. And part of the reason for the braid is because I just feel like I can cast, I can just cast this thing so far with this setup, like super far. And like I was just saying, um, I feel that distance can sometimes just be your best friend when they're Absolutely. tracking. I mean, it's just, it, it can be, I, I can't tell you how many times where it's just like 40, 50 feet. That just ain't far enough, man, for them to play. They want to like get on it and pace it for a minute. Yeah. hundred percent. Now, do you feel with the mono that you have like stretch issues when you try to drive that hook home? Or do you feel that because of the braid to mono that you have a good connection to that bait and it's helping you absorb it a little bit, but also because of the braid it allows you to drive that hook home better so you don't lose as many or do you find that you do lose fish so i this is the deal i uh i i am not good at swinging on them with the, with like most moving baits like i learned this with the chatter bait i i gotta let the rod in the stretch of the line absorb the shock so i can just kind of do a slight pull on it mm -hmm reason i wasn't made to swing on fish with this bait and i've tried it with 20 pound fluoro and just my hookup my landing ratio is garbage and hmm. i went back and forth between like different action rods and i guess like this is just what i found worked for me to where i could get casting distance good landing ratio at the same time versus sacrificing one or the other like this minnesota rig doesn't go very far if you don't have like a heavier rod and stuff yeah. feel like versus like if you were using like a like one of these flash mob juniors dude those are pretty light you can get them pretty far with a lighter rod yeah you know, 
Um, so like I would go down to 20 pound fluoro, I guess, or run straight 20 pound fluoro if I felt like invisibility was an issue, but I've just never, I've never had to, you know? Well, I mean, when you look at the Minnesota rig or an A rig in general, it's got wire all over it. So they're not afraid of the line. They're just there to eat it. So, I or kill it. <laughs> I <would> so, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I've never had I've never had issues like I use twenty pound uh, Suffolk Siege, mm -hmm. and that stuff's tough. That stuff don't break. Yeah, it, that's a good line. That's a good line. I'll give you that one on Suffolk. They make a very good mono. So, do you do any modifications yourself to the rig? Do you find times where like painted blades excel over flashy silver silver willows? So about the only thing that really, I'm not a big A rig, but I don't throw this all the time. I throw it in that window when they're chasing it. Yeah. And it's kind of weird when it happens, but uh, I haven't done a ton of different mods to it. About the only thing that I've done was play around with just the way that I have this, like this specific one. It's kind of cool when you get these, you can kind of bend them out the way that you want them. Mm -hmm. But what I like about this one, you don't really have to mod it in my opinion because the way that these wires hang out like for what i'm doing i'm rolling across boulders and stuff dude this thing bounces off of them like the oh, yeah. shape the way that it is it just deflects right off of them and it's not really an issue so as far as like mods go i don't i haven't really played around a ton with it but uh yeah i mean as far as the specific rig these hog farmer rigs if you feel like this wire is super strong compared to some of the other stuff that i played with yeah it just, so some people got at like the i think it's like 27 bucks but it's like unless you cast this thing off you ain't gonna lose it or break it because the wires bend out on you or whatever you know yeah you're paying for the quality there so yeah that's a great point so uh, let's kind of dive into it now like where do you target bass you said like boulders but is there like a specific area in a lake that you feel shines with the minnesota rig i think that finding i think that finding the right fish so if you can find fish that are targeting like perch you know like bait fish mm -hmm. that's the easiest way to do it um outside of that it's all just a feel it's a feel bait for me so to give you an example um if i pulled up on a school of fish and I've already, I've seen him chasing it. That's probably going to be like the last bait that I throw in the school. You know what I mean? Because I just don't want to draw the fish to the boat. I don't want to spook them with it. But if they're really aggressive that day and they've been, they've been chasing baits and they've been willing to commit here and there, like I'm going to be throwing this a lot. Yeah. Um, and it works. I don't think that it works better, deeper or shallow. It's just about finding the right fish to play with. Perfect. Yeah, I um I'm the same way with an A rig. The one of the biggest things I try to find is like a big flat coming off of a main lake point, like an underwater main lake point, especially later on in the season. I feel like that's just a great area to find fish that are feeding on bait, bait fish in general. Like they're there for a reason. They're eating, getting ready to fatten up for winter. So that's it sounds like it's relatively the same. I know a lot of those lakes out in Minnesota are like big flat basins. So the entire lake is basically a flat with a couple shoals here and there from what I've looked at on maps. So well, to give you a good example, like this year I'm a lax. I see more perch, more bait out there than what I've ever seen in my life. You know, like, that's good. It's insane how much bait I saw out there and a good area that i had found was like just this little transition and i only had like two spots with it but it was like a it was like a sand to like golf ball side rock and it was just like this perfect little transition dude and it was good for like three four bites but i would throw like moving baits to it, and it would be it would be one of four baits but this bait would be one of the four for sure mm -hmm. that they, you know Got it. Now, one last question before we wrap this up real fast. What are your top three swim baits that you throw on the Minnesota rig? I see you have a, see that you have a Hasdong, Chad, but are there any other swim baits that you'll throw on it? Absolutely. There's the Kytec, the Easy Shiner, 
Um, and I like bigger swim baits. I don't, I don't always throw smaller ones, but if I was going to throw like smaller swim bait on this outcast has like, you can get different hook sizes with this. So I would just throw like a one hook if I was going to throw like a two eight or something, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, between the Kai tech easy shiner or the, what is it? The swing, like the, the fat swing impact. Dude, that thing is like, that thing's pretty tried and true. Like. I mean, and then there's another one. I'll just name name one that's off the wall or whatever for me, anyways. That I tried this year that I never tried before, and that was a. I think it's a Big Bites Suicide Shad. Uh, is it Saucy Swimmer or no? That's Guggen Bait. So yeah, I think you're right. Suicide. Big Big Bites Suicide Shad, and dude, it looks like one. It looks like a JDM swim bait. Hmm. Like I'm into I'm into like uh, higher quality swim baits. And I seen these and I had to try them and I'm, I was pretty impressed. Um, so if you like bigger swim baits, I'm going to throw one out there for you real fast, just because they're sitting here. You got to check out these cast prodigies to put sure. on there. So the cool little thing, like I've talked about it quite a bit. I don't know if you can hear this or not, but there's a rattle right here inside the belly. Okay. And it's become my go-to Alabama rig swim bait. Cause they don't tear but when you pop it like if you kind of give it like a pop on the rod it, you'll hear that glass rattle rattle but i just pulled it out there's a little rattle for the chamber like right here that you can put it in and that's a cool little one you can put on there that is cool yeah what do you and you use that for your alabama rigs yeah so then, dude how many times how many times because you said you use five hooks how many times do you feel that really benefit to um have. the five hooks i don't think it matters because i've caught them just as good when i take so in new york i can use five if i go <coughs> about two miles across the river i can only use three so <coughs> i'll have the center with a bigger swim bait the bottom two will be small and then like two really tiny dummies on top the biggest thing for me is basically making a target for those fish to eat. So that middle one is always a little bit bigger or it has chartreuse or I'll throw like a morning dawn color. So like all white on the outside and then this bright purple pink guy right in the middle. And I can't tell you how many big smallmouth I've caught with a pink swim bait on an A-rig. Sure. <laughs> so sure. it just works. But yeah, like I don't think it matters much. I have honestly thought about trying the Minnesota rig here just to see like, if I get better hookups with it, because sometimes when you get five or three hook points, you'll actually hook fish in the side or like one will be on the outside of the face. The other one will be in the tail. And I would really like to minimize how many hooks I put in the side of fish. Makes sense. Yeah. So Maybe. I might try it next year. We'll see. Nice. <laughs> so anything else that you want to touch on here, Sam, before I let you go? No, man. I'm pretty simple. Uh, I would try this, this hog farmer, this hog farmer. If you're going to go with anything around here in someplace where you can only throw one hook, I would say that this hog farmer is probably the best one. Awesome. Well, I thank you for your time coming on here tonight. And, hey, uh, yeah, man. Thanks for hopping on. I continue to look forward to your success over there, Malax, and all the other lakes that you guide on. Thanks for your time today, and uh, we'll chat soon, buddy. All right, brother. Sounds right. good. I'll see you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning into this week's episode of the Lure Lab, where we talked about the Minnesota rig. It's kind of cool because the Minnesota rig is special to, like, that upper Midwest portion of the country because they have a rule where you can only have one hook point on an Alabama rig-style lure. So... We hope you enjoyed this, but as always, if you're tuning in on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button. Leave a comment about your favorite swim bait to put on a Minnesota rig because I just love to know that stuff. And hit the thumbs up. We greatly appreciate it. If you're tuned in on Apple Podcasts or Spotify, please leave us a review. Helps us get noticed. It helps us jump ahead so we can bring quality content to more bass heads like you who are tuning in. So as always, we completely appreciate you guys and everyone tuning in and stay tuned for next week's episode.